Good afternoon and welcome to Daily Scripture and Prayer. My name is John Holliday and I'm pastor of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Old Japan, New Jersey, as you probably know. And I'm delighted that you can be here with me for our common time of shared scripture, shared prayer, shared support for one another as members of the body of Christ, the great and mysterious communion of saints. This is our custom. How about if we join now in focusing on our breath, centering ourselves, grounding ourselves, anchoring ourselves in our hope in Jesus Christ, who sustains us, supports us, and loves us abundantly and unconditionally. Please join me in those seven cleansing breaths. Thank you so very much. Our sisters and brothers in Christ, friends in faith, please join me now in our prayer for this, the sixth Friday in the season of Easter. Let us pray. Father, you have given us eternal life through Christ your Son, who rose from the dead and now sits at your right hand. When he comes again in glory, May he clothe with immortality all who have been born again in baptism. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading that I would like to focus on for this day is taken from the seventh chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. 24th to the 27th verses. This is again part of Jesus's great and actually quite long and incredibly important Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Here ends the gospel reading for this day. So Jesus is calling us to build our lives on him because he is the rock the rock of our salvation, the mighty fortress, the solid ground, the keystone, a foundation to hold on to and live upon and through. Jesus has said about acting upon his words. Sometimes it can be unclear how it is that we can faithfully act upon Jesus's words. It is so often a reverent best guess, and certainly the goal continues to be to act from love. But what is the most life-giving thing to do, and what is the most loving thing to do in any given set of circumstances? When we ground ourselves in prayer, prayer helps to give us a vision and a direction for action, or in some cases, inaction. So friends, I'd like to read for you a passage from a 
mysterious Christian, a Christian mystic, Syrian origin, known as Dionysus the Areopagite. Hmm. This is a 5th century Syrian mystic. And what's a mystic again? Someone who has an experiential knowledge of God. That's a good working definition. He, he took his name from a figure that in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts heard St. Paul preaching in Athens. We just had that a few weeks ago in our Sunday worship service. And he was converted to the Christian faith. He became a believer in Jesus Christ. So this mysterious 5th century Christian mystic took his name from this historical individual, Dionysus the Areopagite, who is named in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts at the very end. You can reference it for yourself. Take a look. And again, it's good to review that passage where Paul proclaims his knowledge in faith of the unknown God that we know in Jesus Christ. So these are the words of Dionysus the Areopagite. He writes, the Trinity is nigh unto all things, and yet not all things are nigh unto it. Only with holy prayers and pure minds, and with souls prepared for union with the Godhead, do we come nigh to it. For it is not in space so as to be absent from any spot, or to move from one position to another, and to speak of it as omnipresent does not express this all-transcendent and all-embracing infinitude. That's a lot there. Basically, Dionysus is trying to say that the Trinity is difficult to nail down and comprehend. But let us press on in prayer, always thirsting for the divine, benignant rays. So prayer is a way that we are getting contact with this mysterious Trinitarian God. Dionysus continues, as if a luminous chain hung suspended from the heights of heaven and reached down to this world below, and we, by seizing it, first with one hand and then with the other, seem to be pulling it down from heaven. But in very truth, instead of pulling it down, we found ourselves carried upward to the higher splendors of the shining rays. Or as if we were on a ship clinging to the ropes which bound the ship to some rocks and we were pulling on the ropes, but we were not be drawing the rocks toward our ship. But in very truth, we would be pulling the vessel closer to the rocks. Or if we were standing on a ship pushing away the rock on shore, we would not be affecting the immovable rock. For in very truth, we would be separating ourselves from it. And the more we push it, the more we would be warding it off. So it is before every endeavor, and especially those endeavors which concern divinity, we must begin with prayer, not to pull down to ourselves what is nigh both everywhere and nowhere, but to commend and unite ourselves to God by these invocations and remembrances. So there's a lot there. I get that. I had to read it a few times myself too, but then but then it came to me what Dionysus was trying to say, I believe, that that prayer is is a way, I mean as he says, he, he talks about a ship being being roped to rocks and you pull on the rope and, and the ship gets closer to the rocks. Not such a good thing, but what he was trying to explain is it may look like the rocks are getting to closer to the ship. But that's not the case. Same as if you're pushing against a rock. You're not moving the rock. It may be getting further away, but no, you're, you're, the ship is moving. It's getting further away from, from the rock. I think that Dionysus is, again, getting at the fact that Jesus is our rock. And prayer is a way that we are connected to him so that as we use prayer, it's like a ship pushing against a rock. It may seem like Jesus is changing, but that's not the case. We are changing. We are moving. That prayer is a way that we are changed. 
and that we are moved. It is a way that we continue, in the words of one of my favorite Christian writers, Anthony DeMello, prayer is a way that we become more aware of God and the potential direction that God would have for us to take. So thank you, Dionysus the Areopagite, for this additional insight on the gift of prayer and how it relates to our continued walk with Jesus through this world into the world to come. Friends, as we get ready for Pentecost in a little bit more than a week, we continue also to reflect on the coming of the Holy Spirit, the spirit that continues to come among us and give us life and wisdom and direction. So this prayer from Henry S. Lunn, who was a Methodist minister who spanned both the 19th and the 20th centuries, is in some ways an invocation of the Holy Spirit, a waiting for the Holy Spirit, and a prayer of thanksgiving for the continued work of this life-giving spirit in our lives. So let us pray. Lord of life, thou art not the dead Christ, for we were of all people most miserable. Our tears are turned into joy as we remember thy glory and thy triumph over death and the grave. And we say thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In thy triumph, we mortals of yesterday can face death, the last enemy, rejoicing in the final and complete victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. O ascended Lord, fulfill in us the last promise of Christ and send upon us, we beseech thee, the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may be witnesses to all people of thy power, the crucified to lead captivity captive, and to receive gifts for people, and to give to all people life in abundance. Almighty God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, shine in our hearts to give the life of the knowledge of the glory of you, O God, in the face of our risen, ascended Lord, and make us to live in him, the living one, who is dead and low, he is alive forevermore. In his name we pray. Amen. So friends, I thank you so very much for joining me again for this time together this day. I wish you a very blessed weekend, a, a very blessed Memorial Day. Please continue to keep in mind our veterans, and all of our military personnel who have given the ultimate sacrifice to protect the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy in this great country. Indeed, let us remember and follow their example, sacrifice, and, and service to a greater good. Please, dear friends, continue to be safe. Stay well. God's peace be with you now and always.